Hello everyone, welcome to another GDevelop tutorial and today I'm going to show you how to make enemies follow the player with the ghost-like movement and also I'll show you some extras, for example how to make your player bounce when the enemy uh, touches the player. Okay, so here we go, this is our uh, basic scene here. Uh, the only things I have uh, in my events section is, uh, you know, I changed the camera position to follow my player uh, and I have some basic stuff to, you know, make my player uh, flip and change animation when we uh, stand or walk, so these are all the basic things. Obviously I have a, um, a platformer uh, character uh, behavior on my player, so it can walk uh, left and right, and I have some um, platforms here with jump through platform behavior. So these are all the basic uh, things I have set up for this project and obviously, you know, the enemies, they don't do anything, they just stand there for now, they don't follow the player, they don't uh, make any damage. So uh, let's start to, uh, you know, uh, add some events and conditions here to make it all work. So uh, first thing I want to do, uh, so you see I have these uh, lives in my UI, right? Uh, so then. I want to make sure that uh, my UI indicator will always show me how much lives I have currently. But currently I have no lives because there is no variable. So I just click on my object and let's add some lives to it. Okay, so I call my variable lives and I say uh, I want to have five lives. Okay, so we have this variable there. And I want to make sure that this um, UI element will always show exactly um, how, much, how many lives I have. So let me search for this text object lives and modify text equals to. So I want to always show the letter X, okay? And plus the actual value of lives. So player uh, variable and we called it lives. Okay, so now if I run the project, it should show five lives, x5. Okay, so that works, that's cool. Uh, next thing uh, I wanna do is to make our enemy smooth. And the logic will be when our player is close enough to an enemy uh, to start to, for it to start to move, it will start to follow our player until we don't uh, run away and then the distance is uh, so uh, so high then you know our enemy will stop and wait when our player will come back okay so um, in order to do that I want to create a subcondition to this uh, condition so this condition is always so this is something that will always happen so I'll just click on it and I add and I click plus here add another condition and to create a sub event I just move it under under this block okay and what is the condition so when uh, the, our enemy distance, so distance between two objects. So and the other object is player. So if distance between two object is um, below 600 pixels, right? Uh, 600 is because I don't want to show that the enemy starts to move um, uh, while I'm running the project. I want it to move outside of the screen. So 600 in my case would be a good number. So it will start to move towards our player outside of the screen, okay? Uh, but you can play with this variable. So if this happens, uh, then uh, our enemy, which I called follow, and we add some force to it towards an object. So it will start to move towards our player. And this is the speed uh, that you can set up for the movement, right? So how slow or fast it should move. In my case, I'll just put 100 here, okay? So let me test this out. So if I walk, our enemy starts to move towards my position. So and it does always that, right? So I jump, it will just you know go up and down. They all start to follow me. Okay, but now if I actually escape from them, so I'll just go far away, they should stop following me. So basically outside of the screen, what happened now, they just stopped. Uh, in uh, in the in the position they they were right, and then if I go back, they will start to move again. So the distance is below 600 pixels. They start to move again. Okay, so that's cool. That that works, uh, and, and that's fine. Uh, but you know when they touch the player, nothing happens. They just stick on it, right? 
So uh, we need to make sure that something happens, right? So uh, in order to do that, uh, and we want want to make sure that this happens for each of these objects, right? So um, in order to do that, I just go to this big plus here and I choose for each object. So I want to make sure that these conditions will happen for each instance of our enemy, okay? So for each object, uh, which is the uh, enemy, okay, for each enemy, um, if the collision between follow, so collision with player, so if they touch each other, uh, so first thing I want to do is to delete our enemy, okay, so it will just disappear. Second thing I want to do is to subtract one life from my player, so I select player, variable, modify variable of an object, the variable is lives, okay, subtract one. Uh, also a good idea here is to add trigger once. So we don't end up like in some cases just subtract too many lives, okay? So it will just happen once. And uh, let's see, let's see if that works. So uh, I just walked towards an enemy. Okay, disappeared and one life was subtracted. Let's see what happens if there are uh, many enemies try to hit me. Okay, cool. So that all works, but you know. It's not very pretty, right? So um, this is where I will tell you a little bit extra how we can make this whole thing a little bit better. So first thing I want to do, uh, if the enemy touches my player, I want it to make uh, uh, to flash, right? So I showed this how to do this in another tutorial, but I will repeat quickly here. Uh, so my players will start to, fla uh, to flash. And another thing uh, I want to do is that my enemy will bounce uh, in the opposite direction from our enemy, right? So, um, but one one thing uh, one thing at a time, right? So, in order to do the flashing effect, we we'll just go here to Project Manager. I have it already here, but let's let me delete it and I'll show you how to do this. Uh, we can go to Functions and Behaviors and search for a new extension and just search for Flash here. Okay, here it is, and I install it to the project. So we have it here, and obviously we need to add to our player. Uh, this behavior so add the behavior to the object flash blink okay there are no no settings here basically other than just how fast you want this effect to be so apply and now I add an action our player and make it flash so here it is flash uh, duration I would put like 1.5 so it will uh, you know flash for 1.5 seconds okay and another thing I want to make sure is that if I'm already flashing, uh, I want to make uh, the player immune to another enemy, right? So when it's already flashing, an uh, enemy will not be able to, uh, to do any damage, right? So the way we can do this, we can check whether our player is flashing already. Uh, so add another condition here, player, uh, search for flash, is object flashing, okay? And invert condition here. So basically what we did here, is if these two objects are uh, touching each other and if this is player is not flashing then we will do all of this so we'll start to flash again we subtract uh, um, one one life from our lives but if it's flashing already this these things will not happen okay so let me test this out so let's go here uh, let me find another enemy so i'm flashing and you see, uh, if I am ready flashing and touch another enemy, it will not subtract uh, my life until I don't finish this flashing effect. Okay, so I'm flashing and this enemy couldn't touch me because I was already flashing. Okay, so that works. Cool. Um, so the next thing I want to do here is actually make my player bounce in the opposite direction from our enemy uh, in, at the moment when it touches me. So um, to do that, I will use uh, twin behavior. Okay. Oops. Okay. So let's just double click our player again and uh, add the behavior and let's search for twin. So I actually have a tutorial about twin. So if you want to look uh, look at it to understand how it works, there is a tutorial here. Um, but we need, we don't need to set up anything. We just need to add this behavior, apply, 
and now that we added that behavior we can add some actions here okay so uh, but I will not add it here uh, because what I want to do is uh, you know I want to check if my enemy is from this side I will make the player bounce to the other side to the left right but if my enemy is from the left side I will make my player bounce to the right okay so uh, in order to do that I'll just need to create some more subconditions I'll just go here, add another event, and drag it under this. And I'll check uh, if my enemy position on the x-axis, so on uh, horizontally, right? I'll check if it's uh, greater than our player x. So right now I'm just checking if, if my enemy is on the right side uh, in respect to our player, then I uh, create a twin, right? So let's select player and search for add object position x twin because uh, we will move it to the to the other side, okay? And twin identifier is just a name for us. I'll call it just hit. And which which position? So we'll check the first uh, the current position of our player, player x. And we need a negative value here because we are throwing our object to the left side, right? So minus two fifty might work. Easing is the type of animation, for, so in this example I want uh, the animation to be very fast at the beginning and slow down at the end, so I can use ease out pod. And then duration is like uh, like how long it will take to do all of that, uh, I would say maybe 600 milliseconds, so this is less than a second, okay. Uh, and let's see, let's see, see if that works, okay. Let's go. There is uh, an enemy there, and our player bounced to the left. But I also wanted to jump a little bit uh, as well, so I just add another action, player, and we'll simulate uh, uh, pressing jump key, okay? So let's search for simulate, uh, jump key press as well, okay? Let's try it now. Okay, that works. Uh, now, uh, you know, it just happens if the enemy hits our player from the right side, so we need to do the same thing for the left side. So I'll just copy this whole thing, copy and paste, and we just invert everything. So if uh, our enemy X position is less than our player X position, so it's from the left side, then we modify this and add here a uh, um, positive value, so plus 250. Okay, so now if we test this out, this works, let's see this, and this works as well. Okay, so it's all working, which is cool, okay, uh, and the last bit really I want to add here is, uh, you know, to make sure if we finish all, all of our lives, uh, we just restart the level, okay? So I'll just add a new condition here, and we check like uh, player variable uh, variable lives equals to zero, and make sure this triggers once, just in case. It's always a good idea to add this. Um, if it's zero, then we just pause, and start a new scene, which is the same scene we are right now in, okay? Uh, so let's test everything out and hopefully this all will work. Okay, so we have five lives, we encountered the first enemy, made some damage, we've been thrown to the left. Now I want to escape from these enemies and see if they are still following me or not. So now right now they're out of the screen and if I stop, no one should follow me anymore. Cool, that works. So let's go back and try to die now. Oh no. <laughs> okay, we've been thrown out of the platform, so let me start this again. Okay, done. Cool. This all works, let's find some more enemies. Should be one here. Cool, and the last one. Alright, it all works. 
So I hope this was uh, interesting and uh, gave you some insights how you can do these things in your own games. And if you like this video, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server. And thanks for watching and see you next time.